We're used to driving. We think we're good at it. And we don't really trust computers. Those three things are the main hurdles that stand between a lot of people and buying into the self-driving future, the autonomous car that's coming. That's not going to stop it from getting here, but along the way, it will behoove regulators, car makers, and just about all of us to pay attention to those who maybe need to be brought along a little more. Researchers Michael Sivak and Brandon Shutley at University of Michigan have some early answers. They surveyed 505 adult U.S. drivers in June 2015 to take their temp on vehicle autonomy. Four attitudes bubbled up. Autonomy itself. The most drivers, especially women, want no self-driving, followed by almost as many who are open to partial self-driving, and under 16% interested in fully automated cars at this point. The biggest naysayers to full automation were drivers 60 and older. Just 11% of them liked the idea. A big problem for policymakers who think autonomy is going to allow older drivers to keep doing so safely longer. Control. We can't yet imagine the steering wheel and pedals going away. Over 96% of the drivers said keep those century-old controls, even if a car is fully self-driving. Interestingly, there was little difference in this response between age groups or gender. Interface. Here an almost even split between those who want to tell their self-driving car where to take them via voice command versus via a touchscreen. Have these folks tried automotive voice command? Only 8% of drivers want to use their phone for this task, and a quaint 3% thought a keyboard and mouse might work best. Finally, notification. For decades, we're going to have partial self-driving cars that will need to hand it back to us on occasion. And clearly, we don't want to be surprised. Over 59% of us want to be alerted via sound and visuals and something vibrating. About a fifth said they can do without the vibration part. Maybe they've tried one of those Cadillacs that already has an odd vibrating alert seat. So it all adds up to a reality check, and it will pay for car makers and regulators to double check their assumptions about our attitudes around self-driving and some of the details of how we expect it to work, rather than assume that we're all going to embrace it in some homogenous fashion. More realities of modern driving revealed now at CNETOnCars.com. Click on Smarter Driving.